Hello, um, my name is Keith Wharton and I'm a lecturer within the Staffordshire University Law School. Now you can see there, although I am the course leader for the LLB in Criminal Justice, I do teach on all the LLB courses. Uh, I also teach on the BA in Offender Management. Um, most of my subjects are theory based. I you know, use the word criminological. But I, I teach on crime prevention modules, uh, criminal criminology modules and crime in context modules at the moment. Now, I've been asked to uh, do a presentation on a subject that I'm familiar with, and I think that you'll find interesting. And particularly this one is very, very topical if you are interested in any of the courses that we do here at Staffordshire. So what I'm going to discuss is what to do about self or should I say selfie made images uh, of children. Um, this is particularly pertinent at the moment because of uh, COVID-19 and the fact that we're on lockdown. And I'll explain that on the next slide. Unless you've been sailing on a yacht in the middle of the ocean, you have to be aware that we are currently on uh, COVID-19 lockdown. Now, the briefing that the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, gave on the 11th of April was quite pertinent to the subject uh, I'm going to talk about today. Um, crime, certain crime is dropping. Burglary, that makes sense. Um, people are at home, um, so there are less burglaries. However, during the same uh, briefing, um, the Home Secretary warned that certain things, such as fraud, but also uh, paedophiles are looking for greater opportunity online at the moment because children are spending more time, screen time, um, interacting with the Internet. And there's a risk factor there. So they might be at home, but paedophiles can still interact with children. And that's the threat that we're going to talk about today or one strand of it. Now, typically in a, a lecture or a workshop, uh, students on, on either course uh, would talk about strands of knowledge. So we would look at law, we would look at case law, but we'd also look at background um, to a subject matter. And it's very pertinent to this. So uh, we've known since about the year 2000, uh, some of you will be too young to remember this, but the the first real boom growth of the internet, that criminals were using the internet very, very readily. But we've never had the moral panic, and that's a, a term I'll use later as well, the, the real panic about um, people who are interested uh, in sexually approaching children. Uh, there's never been the panic about online uh, paedophilia as to uh, people who would sexually abuse children in the community. And an example of that comes from a speech that the then Prime Minister David Cameron did in March 2015, where he made uh, gangs and groups and the way that they were approaching children in community, uh, he made it a, a national threat. So the National Crime Agency took the mandate for that uh, area of business. We've never really had that. But that's not to say there isn't a recognition that it's important. And very recently, the Home Select Committee report in 2018 started to talk about the fact that uh, there has been a 500 percent increase in reported uh, incidents on the um, online. And that would be either people who are trying to meet children or those that are distributing indecent images. And these are the. The, the jobs that are reported. So during that 500% increase, you understand that policing has had cutbacks. So there are less resources and there are less skilled resources that deal with this kind of material. So although uh, despite the speech there from the then Home Secretary David Javid that keeping our children are safe online, there was a recognition from the report that there are gaps. And I 
I, what I've done at the bottom there, I, I've given a link, which I'll always do to the material that I'm talking about. And that uh, that talks about the actual publication. And it's led to a white paper from the government and that that online harms white paper. I've given a link to there so students can readily access the material. So having recognised that there is a threat area, uh, we have to look at a broader way of dealing with it. And this is what this slide is about. And this is what we ask students to consider, particularly in workshops. What are we actually going to do with the problem? Uh, and um, uh, an awful lot of crime, criminal justice, uh, criminology areas come down to the recognition of partnership working. Uh, policing can't do it on their own. So let's uh, work with business. Let's work with the Internet business in particular and see what we can do. And that's the actual thrust of the committee report. Now, this is a strategic uh, look at the area. Uh, I've used the term in uh, IIOC there just to underline that is indecent images of children. Um, it's not a victimless crime. Um, often uh, in my past, when I've dealt with individuals who've committed these offences, they just see it as a collecting, similar to stamp collecting. They mitigate their use of these images. And quite frankly, that's nonsense. It is proportionate for the police and judiciary to deal with this area of business. And there's a, a, a fantastic quote there from a judge in uh, the case of R.V. Beanie in relation to the serious psychological injury which ch children suffer, not merely because of the abuse, but also from the knowledge that these images are on the Internet forever once they're distributed there. And that's a really important uh, part of what I'm going to speak to when children create these images themselves. There's a naivety about what happens to these images which is why it's important we find a way of dealing with them. Now, we are a law school, but also the um, BA and offender management students have to be aware of the legislation uh, because they'll be dealing with individuals in the judicial system, not as solicitors, uh, but they may be dealing with uh, offenders, young offenders, of people perhaps who are in the prison system and they need to understand the legislation that has led them to be where they are. So what we're talking about are a number of offences. Uh, the first, um, the Protection of Children Act. Now I'm going to paraphrase the slide terribly, but that's about the distribution of indecent images and pseudo uh, images uh, of children. And I'll explain that a little more on the next slide. Now, you have to understand the way the, 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 the act is written. It's if you distribute an image, whether you have self generated that yourself. Or um, you are a person who is under 17 years of age, have taken part in a, a, a photo shoot consensually. But they are deemed to be indecent by a court. It's still an offence. So that's really important. It is also an offence to possess an indecent image of a child 17 years and under. So if you've been sent an image uh, from a friend who is 17 years old and that image could be deemed indecent, the mere possession of that image is a criminal offence. Now, I'll just ex explain a pseudo, pseudo photograph and you can see the Criminal Justice and Public Order Act was actually passed in 1994. And it was at that stage mainly dealing with images that were being created offline. However, there were, from about 1995, um, there were some really big uh, cases involving digital imagery. Uh, and I think you would all know what Photoshop can do. So if you create an image of a child and then make it, you Photoshop it to make it an indecent image, that's a pseudo photograph. So that's what that means. And typically, again, uh, for a lecture or workshop, if I'm talking about a subject, 
I will give links to, well, as I have there, legislation. Uh, and there would be an expectation that students would read around the subject prior to the lecture. So you would have a basic understanding of what the lecture, uh, what the legislation actually says. And then it's very important to discuss the legislation, particularly as it's in, been interpreted by the court. I, I thought it very important to, to explain this. Ignorance of the law is no defence. Um, however, some people don't realise the law changed in relation to indecent images of children in 2003 uh, via the Sexual Offences Act 2003. Um, the prior to this act, an indecent image was a, an image of a child under 16, but this act changed that. So a child uh, who is under 18, if the image is indecent, you cannot distribute or possess such an image. Now, this was controversial uh, and they've had to put all kinds of caveats in place, as I've written there in relation to defences. If you are a married couple, for example, uh, or in an enduring family relationship and you take such an image. But dis despite that, people have to be aware that, for example, if a child creates a child of 17, creates an image that is deemed to be indecent and distributes that image uh, over the Internet, they commit a criminal offence. And if they send that image to you you're, and you're in possession of that image, you have committed a criminal offence, as I've explained on the previous slides. It's very, very I, I live in a, I've come from a different generation, but I just want to explain that last paragraph. Um, most students coming into the law school will understand that there is such thing as a revenge pornography. Uh, it, uh, legislation, the Criminal Justice and Courts Act um, was passed to counter this. It seems to be quite common that uh, individuals take pictures of themselves and then when the relationship breaks down, they've, they post images online uh, in form of vengeance. Now, if you do that and the images of a person under 18, you, you would not be charged with the Criminal Justice and Courts Act. You will be charged under the Protection of Children Act, which is a much stiffer sentence if you go to court on that. So people have to realise that. And that sometimes... Uh, we discuss with students, particularly in workshop again, it's about education. How do you, how do you actually get people to know this, um, warn people off? Because prevention of crime is always better than cure. Just very quickly on this slide, I just wanted to point out that um, there were always, uh, since the uh, invention of photography, there were always indecent images of children. But the Internet and the, um, the World Wide Web has led to a huge proliferation of indecent images. But what's particularly uh, become a threat area now is the fact that Interpol are saying an awful lot of the images that they are seeing now, indecent images of children, seem to be self-generated, selfie uh, or sexting. The fact that children are distributing images of themselves and some of these children are very young. So why are these selfie images being created? Um, and to be honest, there's no one answer. Uh, there is a, a, a mix, a toxic mist, mix of reasons. And so let's have a look at that very quickly. Um, we're a smartphone society. Most young people have access to the Internet. In fact, at the moment, you're being homeschooled, um, which is which all takes place online. But children also have access to phones at a very, very young age. And tele mobile phones now are, are better cameras than actually I possess. So you, know, you take uh, images all the time. There are more photographs being taken now than there have been at any time in history. Plus, there's no supervision. There's, there's no longer the, the one family computer that used to sit in the living room. And we would look at, at 
uh, typically some of the theories behind what is happening. And you've got a couple of theories there that talk about lack of supervision. And that would be typical from a lecture and then go on to a discussion part of a, uh, of a workshop. So to answer this toxic mix, um, we have a lack of supervision. Um, children, very young, uh, who have access to the internet. And then we have the other side of it. We have people who would, uh, who would seek to take advantage of this. Now, indecent images of children have been used as a grooming tool for years. That is to say, um, they will send uh, indecent images of children to other children to uh, desensitize them to the fact that, that, that this is, is a, a crime at all. They will, they will say, look, the child on the photograph appears to be having fun. Uh, this, or they will, they will lie and say, look, this is me. Now you send me a photograph. So offenders, um, and that study there for uh, Professor Ether Quayle is a, a, an eminent um, uh, writer in this area of business. But real world access uh, has been limited. It is at the moment because of COVID-19. Families are hopefully uh, social, uh, uh, socially distancing. They're at home more. So there's more actual real supervision. But uh, offenders have learned to create their own spaces. They've learned to create ways of offending so they can access uh, children remotely online. So you've got these, the, these added to a toxic mix. And although nobody uh, is immune from in encountering problems online, particularly if you are a vulnerable individual. And you can get vulnerable adults, but uh, children who are vulnerable, naive, um, and very, very prone to wanting to please friends. Young people are are very susceptible to peer pressure. And then you've got this this uh, element that sexting this is becoming increasingly common, and therefore people, particularly young people, become desensitized to it. And there was what we would discuss. There's an excellent uh, document there by Lewis uh, from 2018 that looked at how technologies have, have can have significant detrimental impact on um, the daily activity of individuals. Now, what I would say is all this research, some of this research, uh, gone on the days of having to uh, uh, rely on books I am very, very uh, pointed with students in relation to the vast amount of material we have on the library website. That's not only e-books, but incredibly, uh, uh, an incredible list of journal articles. And this is one of the journal articles that I've uh, used that uh, is accessed by the Staffordshire University Library. So there's not only an online risk, there's a there's a, a recognized just real world risk to this. And this is an extract from the Anne Kofi report, which was a, a cross party report into the exploitation of children in Greater Manchester. And I, I won't read it to you, but you've got this idea that selfies are just part of it. We get over sexualized music videos, sexting. It just desensitizes children. And I think it's just normal behavior. And that is that has resulted in an increase of of criminal behavior uh, online, some of it self generated. So we talked about the fact that there is law in place. We've got this terrible toxic mix of uh, environmental issues that are causing children to to um, act in a way that uh, certainly it would be seen as a safeguarding issue and on what you do get is you sometimes you get moral panics in the media but the article on the guardian certainly points out that there are thousands of children in this country that have been investigated by the police service in relation to sexting and sending indecent images of themselves some of them very young now this 
this scaremongering, the, the word investigated is different from prosecuted. So, for example, if the police are notified of an image that is being circulated online, uh, it is their duty to investigate and safeguard, and they would do so with social services and other agencies just to make sure that the child is not suffering uh, significant harm, which is actually part of the Children Act. It's a duty to do that, to investigate. Now, the dilemma that police forces face then is, well, so what do we do about it? And I'll come on to that at a later stage because it's very important and another discussion topic for um, students. But um, one of the things that makes investigation very difficult is what you will find is not always, but sometimes uh, because young people are in this toxic environment where they see sexing as no problem, they will, they will not um, quite often uh, work with the police on an investigation uh, because they're fearful of their, their devices being taken off them. And this is not just in this country, but that was a, a, a US uh, campaign that, that, that showed that children aren't um, engaging with law enforcement when it comes to this because they don't see it as a problem and they're fearful of what will be thought of them. Now, importantly, I said police were in a real dilemma with this, and I would ask students to research the following document, which is actually a, the College of Policing report, uh, which has been worked on with the, in conjunction with CPS, the Crown Prosecution Service. Now, once a crime has been reported, it has to be recorded. There's no way around that. Uh, however, Outcome 21, which is part of the Home Office counting rules, and I won't go into that in any detail in, within this. Um, but it looked at the fact that, yes, we've got to record them, but there are, we, yes, the law says that a uh, crime has taken place, but really we do not want to be prosecuting children. So there are, uh, it, it talks about the way that the police service would write off the crime under certain circumstances. And, and I'll, I'll let you read that to you for yourself uh, because I've given you the link there to what it says. But uh, if there's no exploitation, no grooming, there's no profit motive, all of these things, they would write the crime off. So in the UK here, we would not look to prosecute children. Unfortunately, that's a different story in the United States where they are prosecuting children for disseminating self-generated images. I'm going to talk briefly about a worst case scenario because when we are put in your mind this notion of selfish self-generated images, you probably have a picture of, of what that might be. In this case, and again, particularly law students, I would ask them to research the case and we would discuss it in a workshop and, and whether we agreed with it or whether we didn't agree with it. The, the fact is the case is what it is. Uh, and this was uh, a, one of the higher courts uh, in England, Wales, that looked uh, at this case. Um, what happened was a video had been circulated online, uh, which was discovered by the National Crime Agency, a department they have called SEOP, which looks at uh, exploitation online of children. Dreadfully, the case revolved around images uh, on a video um, of what looked like a 12-year-old uh, a girl. In fact, she was 12 at the time, um, who had been persuaded, groomed into indecently assaulting her younger siblings. Um, and the case was about whether she should be prosecuted or not. Now, CPS at the time thought that the offences were dreadful. They, um, uh, we need to prosecute in this case, it's justified. And it was reviewed by the admin court. Now, um, it is complex, but it's not just about the law. You have to look, uh, each case will be taken on its own merit. You have to look at all the circumstances. Now, the mother of both victim uh, victims and perpetrator in this instance 
did not want a prosecution. In fact, she wanted counselling for all three children. And you, you would understand that. And what the courts uh, decided was that counselling would be delayed if there was a criminal prosecution. So a decision was made not to prosecute despite very serious offending. Again, discussion points. Uh, we would uh, study the case and we, we would drag uh, what the students think about this case. And the, do you know, some students would side on one side and some students would side on the other. What I would say, and it's really important to reiterate at this stage, at no point uh, when we talk about subjects such as indecent images of children, would students be looking at indecent images of children? What you'll find at Staffordshire University um, in the law school and other departments here, uh, that you have lecturers who have experience in certain fields and they'll bring that experience to the lectures. Um, so I work within the regional organised crime unit. So when we, um, every angle of criminality, there is almost always a serious organised crime element of it. And you would never think of it in the area of selfies. And this is a case study and it's what I would bring case studies and we would discuss case studies. Um, only 17 years of age, tragic, Daniel here, um, was persuaded by person or persons unknown um, to uh, send an image of himself. Um, and as a result of that, um, what had clearly happened, had he'd been sent an image by what turned out to be an organised crime group from abroad rather than the actual woman that he, he thought had been sending the image. And they had, within the picture that they sent him, uh, sent some malware, some uh, software that accessed his data, accessed his uh, uh, contact list, and they showed him his own contact list and said, we're going to send the picture that you've sent us to everybody on that contact list unless you pay us a thousand pound. And he probably killed himself. Absolutely tragic, but it, it shows you how organised crime have infiltrated this area of business. So it's important to educate potential victims. Now, I can't help myself. Uh, I, I teach on some of the criminological areas of business. So I'll always come back down to uh, uh, theories surrounding areas. And I think it makes it more interesting. And this is particularly important now. So the COVID-19 uh, element. There is an, um, a theory that was written in 1979 by Cohen and Felson. It's a brilliant theory and encompasses, uh, encompasses a lot of things, but it's about crime opportunity. And think what I talked about earlier when I mentioned Pretty Patel and what she was saying. What the uh, opportunity of crime, the routine activity uh, uh, theory looks at is the fact that if you have a motivated offender, potential target and lack of capable guardianship, you will get offences. Now, that could be a burglary, for example, if you, you've got a burglar in an area and there's a house uh, with a window open that's clearly empty and there's no capable guardianship, you will get a burglary. That's what the, the theory says. And we're having the same here. So we're having children, naive children, perhaps, who are spending more screen time, because of this Ofcom, we're, we're living in a smartphone society. Everybody's got access to the Internet, even at a very young age. So we've got motivated paedophiles. We've got lots more potential targets, unfortunately, and lack of capable guardianship. Because quite honestly, do parents know or guardians know what their children are doing all the time online? Uh, I don't think so. So that we're getting potential for offending. And that can be persuading children. They're not meeting children at the moment because we're on lockdown, but they may be sending indecent images to those children. They may be asking for indecent images in return. They may be setting children up uh, as uh, pretending to be friends, uh, tricking them into sending images. And you get that dreadful uh, tale that I, I pointed out to you on the previous slide where money is then demanded. 
So all of these things that, that could potentially happen now because our routine activity has changed. Um, and you've got on the back of this, and uh, again, it's a, another report by Ethel Quayle. What happens on online in certain areas online is that criminals share their knowledge. And so if they've met children who are susceptible, um, they, there are areas, particularly in the dark web, where they discuss victims and um, give each other support. And so you've got this pollination of criminality. So I'll wrap up what I was talking about today. Hopefully you found the subject matter interesting and it's given you food for thought. Uh, that's what I would hope to instill in any student, whether they're a law student, whether they're a policing student, because I did a policing student, uh, a lecture to policing students earlier this week, or in your BA, on the BA in offender management. So lectures and workshops will dis discuss law, case law, we'll look at case studies, uh, but it's about the interpretation of those, because you have to look at each case under its own circumstances. And sometimes there is no easy answer. We, in fact, we may go to disagreement uh, within the workshops. One group, uh, for example, well, I mean, this is totally off the wall, but we, it's always a, a, a subject that get, gets students talking, and that's the death penalty. And some students are in support of the death penalty, and others are not. Uh, some uh, sit in a halfway house in relation to, strangely, uh, people who access children and uh, child murderers. Oh, I'd have the death penalty for them, for, but for nothing else. But it's about this discussion and, and bringing knowledge out through discussion. Um, so the question I would ask on the, on the subject here is, well, what, what do you do to educate ch children and young people about sexting? Bear in mind, a 17 year old uh, target audience is very different from a five to six year old target audience. Do you actually focus on parents? Should we be putting at the moment greater education uh, documents out to parents? If Pretty Patel is standing there saying, yes, we're, we're, we're having more fraud, we're having more paedophile activity. Well, where is the information that comes on the back of that that tells people to counter what's happening? So uh, uh, and students, uh, nobody has a monopoly on good ideas and students are, are encouraged to bring forward their ideas. Would you change the law? Would you look uh, in light of this new threat? Would you put new legislation in place or would you change the legislation that's already in being? So there we have it. That is just one area of business. Um, uh, I find these areas interesting. It was a specialism that I worked in for many, many years. Uh, and my experience uh, of being at Stafford University is that it's the kind of subject uh, students really engage with. So hopefully uh, your future is at Staffordshire University. And that's the kind of uh, area of business that you'll be engaging into. Thank you very much for your time.